A philosophical zombie is a hypothetical being that is physically identical to a normal human being but does not have conscious experience. This means that a philosophical zombie would behave exactly like a normal human being, but it would not feel any pain, pleasure, or other emotions. It would also not have any subjective experiences, such as what it is like to see the color red or to taste ice cream. The term of philosophical zombies was coined by the philosopher David Chalmers although some others had used a different name, such as imitation man, to describe it previously. It has become a popular thought experiment in philosophy of mind, as it raises a number of important questions about the nature of consciousness. In this video, we will discuss the key questions on consciousness that this thought experiment raises. We will also examine the supporting and opposing views on the concept. One of the key questions that philosophical zombies raise is whether consciousness is a physical property or a non-physical property. If consciousness is a physical property, then it should be possible to detect the difference between a conscious human being and a philosophical zombie. However, if consciousness is a non-physical property, then it may be impossible to distinguish between a conscious human being and a philosophical zombie, even if we had perfect knowledge of their physical brains. A fictional example of this is in the movie Blade Runner where the Voigt Kampf test is used in an attempt to distinguish between conscious, real humans, and non-conscious beings, replicants. The test is based on the idea that replicants lack empathy and other human emotions that consciousness would provide. Of course, the fantastic ending tears in the Rain monologue put that into question. Along the same lines, another key question that philosophical zombies raise is whether consciousness is necessary for intelligence. If consciousness is necessary for intelligence, then a philosophical zombie would not be able to think or reason. However, if consciousness is not necessary for intelligence, then a philosophical zombie could potentially be just as intelligent as a conscious human being. As we develop AI systems, this question is becoming more critical. For example, in video games, NPCs are non-player characters that are controlled by the computer. They are often used to populate the world and provide interaction for the player. NPCs have become very sophisticated, but they are ultimately just programs that are following a set of rules. But, through sophisticated self-learning algorithms, would it be possible for NPC to gain consciousness? And, if so, what would that be like? Or, could a highly intelligent NPC be created without attaining consciousness? Now, let's consider that if philosophical zombies are possible, then what is the relationship between consciousness and qualia? Qualia are the subjective feelings and sensations that we experience. For example, the qualia of pain is the feeling of being in pain. The qualia of red is the feeling of seeing the color red. One possibility is that consciousness and qualia are two distinct phenomena. Philosophical zombies would have consciousness, but they would not have qualia. This is because they would behave just like humans, but they would not have any subjective feelings or sensations. Another possibility is that consciousness and qualia are two sides of the same coin. In other words, consciousness is the experience of qualia. If this is the case, then philosophical zombies would not be possible. This is because they would not have qualia, and therefore they would not be conscious. If philosophical zombies are possible, then what is the relationship between consciousness and free will? One possibility is that consciousness is necessary for free will. This is because it is difficult to imagine how a being that is not conscious could make free choices. For example, if a philosophical zombie were to choose between two different actions, it would be difficult to say that it was making a free choice, since it would not be conscious of the options or the consequences of its choice. Another possibility is that consciousness is not necessary for free will. This is because it is possible to conceive of beings that are not conscious, but that can still make free choices. For example, a computer program could be designed in such a way that it can make free choices, even though it is not conscious. If philosophical zombies are possible, then what are the implications for our moral responsibility? One possibility is that philosophical zombies cannot be held morally responsible for their actions. This is because they would not be conscious of their actions or the consequences of their actions. They would simply be acting out their programming. Another possibility is that philosophical zombies can be held morally responsible for their actions, even though they are not conscious. 
This is because they would still be able to cause harm to others, and they would still be capable of understanding and following moral rules. A fictional example of this is found in the movie I Robot where the robot Sonny is told to save the girl and he apparently makes a choice based on moral responsibility instead of algorithmic analysis. If philosophical zombies are possible, then what are the implications for our understanding of the nature of reality? One implication is that it suggests that consciousness is not a fundamental property of the universe. If philosophical zombies are possible, then it means that there can be beings that are physically identical to humans, but lack consciousness. This suggests that consciousness is something that arises from something other than the physical structure of the brain. Another implication is that it suggests that the mind is not reducible to the brain. If philosophical zombies are possible, then it means that there can be beings that have minds, but no brains. This suggests that the mind is something more than just the physical brain. Now, let's examine the arguments used to support the concept of philosophical zombies. Bear in mind that these concepts are controversial and require close scrutiny and debate. There are a number of philosophers who believe that philosophical zombies are metaphysically possible, meaning that they could exist even if they do not actually exist. These philosophers argue that consciousness is a non-physical property that is not reducible to physical properties such as brain states. Therefore, it is possible to conceive of a being that has all of the same physical properties as a conscious human being but lacks consciousness. One of the main arguments in favor of the metaphysical possibility of philosophical zombies is the argument from conceivability. This argument states that if we can conceive of something, then it is metaphysically possible. We can easily conceive of a philosophical zombie, as it is simply a being that is physically identical to a conscious human being but lacks consciousness. Therefore, philosophical zombies are metaphysically possible. Another argument in favor of the metaphysical possibility of philosophical zombies is the knowledge argument. This argument states that if we know something, then it is metaphysically possible. We know that we are conscious, but we cannot know that other people are conscious. Therefore, it is metaphysically possible that other people are philosophical zombies. The qualia argument states that qualia, the subjective feelings and sensations that we experience, are not physical properties. If philosophical zombies are possible, then they would not have qualia. However, philosophical zombies would be physically identical to humans. This argument tends to refute physicalism and is, therefore, highly controversial. Lastly, there's the argument from free will. This argument states that if philosophical zombies are possible, then free will is not reducible to consciousness. This is because philosophical zombies would not be conscious, but they would still be able to make choices. However, this raises the problem of how it is possible for beings to make choices without being conscious. Now, let's take a look at the opposing views on philosophical zombies. There are a number of philosophers who believe that philosophical zombies are not metaphysically possible. These philosophers, typically those of the physicalist school of thought, argue that consciousness is a physical property that is reducible to brain states. Therefore, it is not possible for a being to have all of the same physical properties as a conscious human being but lack consciousness. The argument from function is another challenge to the concept of philosophical zombies. This argument states that two things that have the same function must also have the same physical properties. Consciousness is a function that allows us to experience the world and to interact with it in a meaningful way. Philosophical zombies would have all of the same physical properties as conscious human beings, but they would not have the same function. Therefore, philosophical zombies are not metaphysically possible. Supervenience is another argument made against the metaphysical possibility of philosophical zombies. This argument states that one thing supervenes on another thing if the first thing cannot exist without the second thing. Consciousness supervenes on brain states. This means that consciousness cannot exist without brain states. Therefore, philosophical zombies, which are beings that have all of the same physical properties as conscious human beings but lack consciousness, are not metaphysically possible. The debate over the metaphysical possibility of philosophical zombies is a complex one, and there are strong arguments to be made on both sides. Ultimately, whether or not you believe that philosophical zombies are metaphysically possible is a matter of philosophical judgment. 
However, even if you do not believe that philosophical zombies are metaphysically possible, the thought experiment can still be useful. It can help us to think more deeply about the nature of consciousness and its relationship to the physical world. It can also help us to appreciate the fact that we are conscious beings and that our consciousness is something that should be cherished. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video and feel free to comment to let us know your thoughts on it. Also, check out our other study review videos on other philosophers and philosophies.